We're starting with the game of the weekend. Only one loss between the Lions and Vikings heading into this big Sunday NFC North matchup. So many amazing matchups to watch. Sadly, Aiden Hutchins will not be one of them after a season ended a week ago against the Dallas Cowboys. But to me, the one I want to watch as a big All-22 guy, a big X's and O's guy, is Ben Johnson, Brian Flores. I mean, if you're just talking about coordinators on their respective sides of the ball, These guys are top three minds in the NFL right now, probably the top two head coaching candidates for the next coaching cycle. So seeing what each has in store in such a big matchup with such massive NFC North implications, Ben, I'm going to start with you. What do you expect? How do you think this one's going to go down? Uh, This will be like a playoff game, in my opinion. Number one, the atmosphere is going to be electric there in Minnesota. Skull! That's all you're going to be hearing. That's all you're going to be hearing, right? So that's number one, just the atmosphere. This is what we live for as football fans, knowing these type of matchups when you have good on good from the coaching, from the personnel, and they're all going to be playing at their best. So the atmosphere, but what I'm looking for, when you talked about the the defensive coordinator and, and the offensive coordinator matchup, mine kind of ties into that, right? Because for me, Brian Flores, his defense, they have to be in their bag. They got to have a heck of a day for them to be able to win this ball game. And here's why. You look at what they've done throughout this five-game winning streak they're currently in the midst of. They have been harassing every quarterback they face. They have made life miserable from the standpoint of confusing and from the standpoint of just being super aggressive and getting home in the pocket. That has to continue. Secondly, when you talk about Detroit, Their offense, when you allow Jared Goff to get into a rhythm, it's hard to get him out of that two-step when he's dancing in that rhythm because he gets things going. Then lies the opportunity to open the entire playbook for the Detroit Lions. So watching Jared Goff, when he's been at his best, he's been able to work from the confines of a great pocket. But when he struggled, pressure. He does not do well against pressure. He does not do well against blitzes. So if Brian Flores, not if, because we know he's going to dial up major blitzes, but getting home and making sure you collapse that pocket is super important for them to be successful. So that's what I'm watching, because watching Jared Goff, even going back to his Rams days when he was playing for the Rams, he does. He did not handle pressure well. And up until this point, he still has issues with pressure. Can he handle the pressure? If we will wait and see. But if they can get home, there lies the opportunity to be successful against Jared Goff. I think what makes that Lions offense unique, and and to your point about the Vikings, they get after quarterbacks. They like to get them off their spot. But this Lions team, they take your sword and they force you to play defense with your sword. You can no longer attack because we're coming downhill at you. I mean, this has been the story of the Lions, the way they've drafted, the way they put together this roster. It's to be able to protect Jared Goff in advantageous situations. I'm talking third and manageables. They stay on schedule better than anybody, in my opinion, on first and second down by nature of the belief and the confidence in that unit up front. They put the roster together. Ben Johnson puts the game plan together. And when they put you within sniffing of the first down line, That's when Jared Goff can either go heavy play action and take a shot because we got another down next down to get the first down on the ground. But that's when Jared Goff can take shots. He kind of catches you in between beats as a defense and he tries to make you pay for it. So how are they? How is Flores going to try to mitigate that risk and stop them on first down? And how is Jared Goff going to be able to take advantage on those low balls and energy on the huge plays down the field? Yeah, what I'm looking for is this Lions game plan from like a formational perspective. Ben Johnson does so much in terms of the flexibility that he does with multiple tight ends, sixth offensive linemen, those sort of things to really throw off the blitz looks. And we saw it last year against the Vikings. Lions put up 30 points against them in both games a year ago. And now obviously a little different animal walking through that door in Minnesota this year, what we've seen. But I will say Blake Cashman, one of the guys who's been so key to those blitz packages, they're a free agent linebacker that they signed this year, will not be playing. And then you look at the Lions this year, Jared Goff, highest yards per attempt of anyone against the blitz. But number two on their list just happens to be Sam Darnold. So I think that side of the ball is interesting too for me, is what the Vikings will do offensively because 
They may not be with Aaron Jones this week. He may be hurt with that hamstring. And if he doesn't go, there's such a massive drop-off in that Vikings backfield, in my opinion. He's so key to that stretch zone game they love to bring to the table. It's Lions run defense, top three in the NFL right now. If they're not going to be able to run the football and they make Sam Darnold one-dimensional, all of a sudden I think the Vikings could be in trouble if they're coming from behind because they haven't been behind. Haven't have only trailed for three minutes and 28 seconds all season long. Excuse me, 26 seconds all season long. I didn't even give enough credit there. This team has been a house, but I do think against this Lions, it's just a little different animal than what they faced this season. All right, real yeah, quick, I mean, guys, can we different. give uh, Kevin O'Connell some flowers real quick? Because you talked about not knowing if they will have Aaron Jones or not. To your point, I agree. It would be a big drop off because he's a big time dual threat back for them. But think about the, the the adversities they've been hit with, right? You think about the unfortunate death to Kyrie Jackson in the offseason, right? Thinking about that that battle, that hurdle you need to get over as a team. Then you think about losing J.J. McCarthy in preseason and then losing your starting corner, Makai Blackman, uh, as well as you got ready for the season. And then T.J. Hawkinson, still is rehabbing, you know, his season injury, injury, ending injury from a year ago, and they're 5-0. and oh. Like, that is overly surprising for a team to be dealing with so many hurdles, which happens in the National Football League. But a lot of those injuries happen before the start of the season, along with the unfortunate death to, a, to an individual who they drafted who was going to be a contributor, and they haven't blinked at all. So that tells you the type of leader that Kevin O'Connell is, along with – being a super, really good coach, bro, because those are things that really would make organizations go downhill, mostly for that year when you're dealing with so many adverse situations. So for them to be undefeated, I think we don't really highlight some of the things they've been dealing with for them to be where they currently sit in the moment of their season, to be undefeated and to be looking like one of the best teams in the NFL, just not the NFC. Yeah, that NFC North is so strong. It's going to be interesting to see which one of these teams comes out on comes out on top of this matchup because obviously any of these teams from the division are dangerous. We've talked at length about the Bears, the Packers. You know, Mike's a big Packers fan, so we talk about them all the time. But the Lions and the Vikings are right there at the top of the NFL, not just the NFC North, not just the NFC. These are teams that are at the top of the pecking order. We're going to find out if Minnesota's for real. I tend to think, to your point, that Kevin O'Connell's a fantastic coach, coupled with Brian Flores. It's just a match made in heaven there. It's almost football paradise for guys like Mike that, that enjoy breaking down the All-22 and getting into the weeds. And for the Lions, they're going to try to just brute their way through this thing. And you talked about next man up and grit. That's what the Lions are all about. So we're going to find out who's grittier this weekend. Yeah, and I think it speaks to not only one, the coaching, but the rosters these teams have built because you mentioned all the Vikings injuries, but now the Lions defensively, the amount of yep. starters they're down from the what was projected beginning of the season, Aiden Hutchinson, who we'll still see how they deal with that loss. Uh, we haven't really talked about it much, but he was a one-man pressure package on his own through the first six weeks of the season until that gruesome injury he went down with. So losing him. Losing Marcus Davenport, who was your other starting defensive end. Losing John Kaminsky, who was your third string defensive end. Losing uh, Emmanuel Mosley at corner. Ifatu Malfanu at safety. Derek Barnes at linebacker. It's like those were all guys who were penciled in to be starters for you and to be down them and still getting the results, still holding the Dallas Cowboys to less than 10 points. So these two teams, yeah, they definitely belong in that, as Kyle said, best conference, or excuse me, best teams, not only in their conference, not only in their division, but among the whole NFL.